Drama as House of Reps Committee resumes probe on Chinese loans agreement and the election of Governor Dwyer Dury of Bayasa State cancelled. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome to Plus Politics. I am Kaudi Ladende. The discussion of Nigeria's external borrowing is still ongoing and it seems to have taken a different stance as Minister of Transportation Roti Miyamichi and other government officials appeared before Honorable Osai Osai led committee after being summoned. Amichi, who had earlier appeared before the committee, had said the probe would send the wrong signal to China, which could stop the loans thereby thwarting the nation's rail projects. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, and the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, were also summoned. Joining us to discuss this is Honorable Sokonte Davis, who is a former Director, Marine Operations of the Nigerian Port Authority, and is also a former House of Reps member. Good evening. Good evening. And uh, to also join us in this conversation is Liboros Oshoma, a legal practitioner, and I choose to have this time around a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Mr. Liboros Oshoma. Good evening, Leah Kayode, and good evening, Honorable and our viewers. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Oshoma. Okay, let me start with, uh, by, 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 by law of first mention, let me start with Honorable Sokonte. Let's look at uh, the front and back. And I think the argument this time around is what the Minister of Transportation did say just a few days ago when he came to Lagos Ibadan to inspect the project. And he said he's a bit worried that what the House is investigating is uh, the loan and not whether there is corruption or not, that they should allow the executive to do their job. So are we saying that the House of Reps is perhaps, you know, going beyond this brief? Well, this is really the House of Representatives, the National Assembly as a whole, um, can undertake any um, investigation which it wants to undertake. But we do understand that there are three arms of government, which is the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. And each arm is saddled with its own responsibility. Each arm is saddled with its own responsibility. The House Committee, there's a House Committee on, on, on loans, um, debt services, and donages, I guess. There's a committee like that. And when the executive wants to borrow money, what it usually does is to send its request to the National Assembly. And National Assembly, through its committees, looks at um, these requests and gives approval. And that is the process. Presently, um, as a former member of the House, indeed, I, I'm actually at a, at a loss as to what the House is looking at. Is it challenging? Um, uh, is it um, questioning Nigeria's right to take loans? Or is it questioning the utilization of those loans? Because they have to make this, what they're looking for, very clear. Because it's like someone looking for a need, uh, needle in a haystack. So when these things are not very defined, if they are saying, oh, the process was corrupted, and we want to ensure that it was not corrupt, then they make that point very clear, and then we know what they're looking for. It's just like, uh, the, the perception out there now is, I think, they are trying to move from the answer to the question, and that is the confusion in it. And maybe that is what is also um, intriguing the minister and all other um, fair-minded um, observers. Like I said, as a former member too, I do not understand what the, that committee is looking for now. Is it the... Um, getting of the loan, the signing of the loan agreement, that the loan is looking for all the utilization, all the corruption in the process of utilization. So if it defines what it's looking for, then this issue of um, bias or uncertainty will just be addressed. So that is the issue. So it's not that National Assembly cannot probe anything, but what it's looking for should be made clear so that it's not like you look for so many things or you, don't, you are not sure what you're looking for, then you want to grab on anything you, 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 you see. 
And that is the impression that is going mm -hmm. out now. When this issue of loan uh, um, started, the, the assumption was that, oh, the National Assembly must have seen some corruption in the process of uh, 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 investigation of the presentation of okay. the loan. But that is not the case. It came to be a, a matter of um, picking up sovereignty, which is not so in a, in a sense. Because anybody who is borrowing money to you, who is lending money to you, will definitely require for some form of guarantees. Otherwise, you just bought away with such business money. So the issue is not whether National Assembly should investigate or not. But the issue is that what National Assembly is investigating should be made clear to um, okay. everybody so that we will know what they are looking for. Okay. So that when the outcome, when they conclude the investigation, they will know that, oh, this is what they are looking for, and they found it or they did not find it. These are the issues that they Okay, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Let me quickly go back to, I mean, let me go to, to Shoma. Uh, it is in the public space, your stand on this issue. And I would like to remind you in context so that we can get whether there's an update on your stance on what you said about this issue. Now, uh, some of the things you've said over time is um, this present government probably has uh, subtly told the National Assembly that most of their issues are advisory. In other words, their recommendations are hardly taken serious. So why is House of Reps so bent on this issue? And the minister is saying, let's not send the wrong signal that the, the Chinese government might withdraw these loans. Don't you think uh, we should draw the line here? Um, thank you, uh, Coyote. Uh, first and foremost, um, Government is built on trust. Once there is a breach of trust, um, it is also very, it's always very, very dangerous for people to rely on whatever you say, do, or you know, uh, act. And, and so, to that extent, um, government in Nigeria has uh, completely, you know, um, lost the trust of the people. And so, you find that at every turn, the people would want to know. Um, what is going on in government. And so it is also very easy for the actors and participants in government to use such opportunity of wanting to know, you know, to find the embers of, you know, feathering their own nest. Yeah, I, I to some extent also, I quite agree with um, the Honorable um, that um, the House of Rep is not definitive in um, what they want to uh, what they are looking for. But that said, it is also very, you know, common that the House of Rep has said that um, the content of the loan are not too favorable to Nigerians. Um, for me, that issue ought to have been discussed even before the loan were taken. Um, if there was a committee of the House, I expected the committee of the House to have reviewed alongside the ministry the content of uh, the loan agreement before it was signed at all. And um, having been signed, and now um, six by the provisions of Section 88 and Section 89 of the 1999 Constitution, the National Assembly can carry out quasi-judicial uh, powers to expose corruption. If the process of the loan or the execution of the process is corrupted, then the National Assembly had the right to investigate in performing its oversight function to say, well, we understand that the process of executing this loan has been corrupted or compromised. And, and so that's what we want to find out if the process really is corrupted or will lead to corruption. But that is not definitive also in the step taken so far by the National Assembly. Rather, it's almost like Oh, I, I want to believe that that's, there's a network failure there. Uh, uh, but I promise you that when we resume with that yeah. network, you will be allowed to drop your thought or finish your talk. Back to you, Honorable Davies. Uh, uh, let's, let's look at uh, another dimension that, the, that we have today where the minister is accusing the, 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 the chairman of the committee of being partisan. Uh, probably is because it's PDP and it wants to frustrate the effort of the APC. Some have described that as being diversionary. What do you have to say to that? 
Well, um, you know, like um, uh, our friend was talking, you know, when investigations are, they are blood, there's no clear pattern anymore. Like even everybody can see. We know how this, the whole thing started and the conversation is not going through that direction. Of course, it will also be incumbent on the, other, the person on the other side of the table to also make a conjecture. So it's not anything about being diversionary in a sense, because it's obvious presently to any fair-minded observer of what is happening that the issue of the investigation is no longer defined. And so when it's no longer defined, just like all of us are agreeing, when it's no longer defined and you don't know what exactly they are pursuing, you begin to make conjecture. And indeed, when you even talk about some of these loans, I've heard out here that these loans you are taking, they were signed under previous administration. A lot of them were signed under previous administration and nothing substantial was seen to have been done when this vice president administration came and said that these loans were taken for dip developmental purposes and they should be applied for developmental purposes. And some of these projects that that have been applied for, have been seen daily, and the workability is being seen. So when things are like that, you took a loan and say you want to build a house, and you are building the house, and someone begins to question whether you are building the house or not, whether you will take the loan or not, and not, not being clear, you two will begin to make out reason, because of course, the chairman of the committee is of the, of the PDP, the government is of APC, and when these are developmental issues, like we are saying that if you are questioning the processes, then you also question yourself, did you do proper due diligence? Are you not actually shooting your foot yourself on the foot? But this loan request came to you and you passed it without looking at the, 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 the conditions. And that is, that is injurious itself. It's, it's like inflicting injury to yourself that you didn't do your work very well. Now you're just waking up to realize. Anyway, no problem, you're waking up to realize. Is it correct? Is it correct? Yes, okay. I want to, I want to, I want to go back to him. I don't. No, no, no. You, mind. But just finish your thoughts. In the process or in the corruption, the process, corruption in the process of um, getting the loan, or corruption in the execution of the, pro, um, the projects, the loan is being utilized for. Okay. So when these things are not clear, then you give the minister no little option than to also make some conjectures of what you're actually looking for. Okay. So I think that is that is where we are yeah. as at present. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Libero was just trying to alert to us that uh, the network I is just back. Continue, I might continue with this. Uh, okay. Yes, I wanted to continue with uh, my, my line of thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So, like I was saying, um, the argument that, um, you know, there were clauses ceding sovereignty in the event of default, for me, those are, uh, those are issues that ought to have been seriously dealt with at the inception, before even the agreement was signed, because these are clauses that are very, very injurious to our sovereignty, if not properly handled. Because if you default, you cannot, it is, it, you cannot determine what the creditor will take from you if you say, I waive my immunity. It is also not compulsory that the creditor would come after the, the, the uh, project that the loans were used for, if you didn't tie the project specific to the loan. So that's why I blame both the National Assembly and the executive at the inception, right from the word go. If both parties had truly reviewed those terms and conditions of the loan, the National Assembly would not be doing what they are doing now, all in the name of oversight. And then, be that as it may, I also said, the National Assembly that we know from inception, is the executive had told them, that your resolutions are mere advisory. And mere advisory is left for us to take it or leave it. And be that as it may, if at the end of the day you investigate this matter and the, you make recommendations or pass resolutions, and the executive decide to go ahead with whatever they want to do, the, at the end of the day, it's work done zero. And, and so for me, let's do the right thing. From the inception, when you want to take a loan, you study the, the fine lines of the content of your agreement very well. All of the details will be properly negotiated. It is not bad in taking loan. The problem is the breach of trust that the people have in government. And, and so once there's breach of trust, what happens if you default? 
If you, how are you going to pay back? What are the modalities for payback? Okay. For payback, what is the tenure? So okay. all of this ought to have been, you know, I'll, taken care of. I'll come back at the, to you. At the exception. So that are, from the, the blast of the whistle, anybody that opens that document will know from the word go that this is the terms and condition, and this is what it entails. But at the end, if you now come up midway to say, well, we are investigating, and like the Honorable has said, you are self-indicting yourself also because you had opportunity to look into that document before it was signed. And what did you do? You looked the other way. You either okay. looked the other way or you didn't sign at all. And then you now say you want okay. to investigate. I I'll come back to what that. What is the essence of investigating at this stage when the loan had been taken? Okay, I I'm coming back to that uh, because you've raised quite a lot of issues with your position and I will want to get... Uh, uh, Honorable Davis' response to that. I, I, I'm sure you have gone through the document because you've been following this case. What exactly yeah. is this controversy of our sovereignty being ceded in case of default? Well, the issue is not our sovereignty being ceded in case of default. Presently, it is a, it's, it's an, it's an international standard. In fact, this issue of um, waiver of sovereign immunity it's a, it's a piece of legislature that was crafted in the United States of America. And why it became necessary is because it, has, it, it is seen that when entities take loans, and as well when the sovereign loans are of that nature, that you cannot sue a sovereign country on things like that to take over its sovereignty, you cannot. But for you to get such loans, you have to sign such clauses, which say that if I default, you can sue me as a con country in the process of recovering your loan, in the process of making sure that the default is paid for. It is not very, it, it is not that they are going to run the country for you, no. They are not going to, even, even when they're seizing assets, they can't seize your, your embassy, your overseas emb uh, assets that are tied to embassy. So there's no way they can take over sovereignty because yeah, yeah, over, the embassy overseas is the symbol of your sovereignty. And when they cannot even take anything from there, so you have not seen your sovereignty. What you have, seen, you have signing is that if I default, mm -hmm. that company, that entity, that bank, because we have commercial banks, that bank has been given right to be able to sue the sovereign nation. Otherwise, it cannot sue a sovereign nation on things like that. So it's a piece of legislation that was drafted in the US that is now applied in almost all international loan agreements. So it's even very rare for countries to get loans without such clauses or um, things close to it. So it's not a matter that we are saving our sovereignty, which is the fear Nigerians express. Of course, as a Nigerian, I be afraid that if we fail to pay loan, some country will come and um, take our sovereignty, so they recolonize us. That it is goes the, beyond that. That is okay. not what it is. Okay, so, Liberals. Liberals we're all, we're all agreeing on the same point that the problem we have now is because either the National Assembly indeed didn't do its work at the initial stage, and the executive's concern now is that we have been able to secure loan on favorable terms with the, from the Chinese companies, the Chinese banks, and they are and developmental, uh, they are development oriented, they are tied to development. And if we begin to do this thing, back and forth, who else, who, how can we get the type of loan under the type of condition, 2.5%, and with a moratorium of 10 years, to be paid after 20 years? It's, I've, I've not seen such generous terms of loans before. And so these are the challenges. That's why the executive <laughs> believe is worried that okay. if we continue this process, if we continue this process of after signing, now reviewing the loan again, it will, it will not give only, uh, uh, how do you say, People are not only going to, the nationals are not, we're not going to distrust the, the executive, but even foreigners to be okay. worried about Nigeria. Not that if these guys, you give them loan, be careful that it is properly done. I, I'll come Mid back to that. To let, let, the let's, because, because of time, uh, uh, Honorable of Davis, and because of time, let's quickly, uh, let's quickly uh, seal some of this thing up. I think uh, liberals has a, a dissenting opinion on that. Let's hear you. Yes, it goes beyond the sovereign um, immunity clause goes beyond um, just suing a sovereign country. Um, if you remember the case of Zambia, um, the, the sovereign immunity clause actually covers also 
the, the creditor, you know, uh, taking hold of the assets of the company, even of the country, even inside the country. If it's just about the capacity to sue, um, you know, the P&ID case, there was no sovereign immunity clause. And all, the, all P&ID needed to do, once you have an arbitration clause, all P&ID needed to do was to approach an arbitration in London and then get a judgment against Nigeria and then execute such judgment against our account. But in this case, you have a sovereign immunity clause that waives sovereignty. First and foremost, sovereignty to come manage that asset that they give you the money for, or sovereignty or opportunity to lay hold of any other asset that might attract your creditor. And that's why some people have been on the view that the National Assembly and the executive ought to have been very careful to be, to the, to be specific on the waiver of the immunity. I agree that immunity is not for them to come and govern you. But a situation where we all know how Chinese people operate, they are not Father Christmas. They give you loan on such fantastic clauses. They are undertone. And if you slip, you fall into their hands. And so we also need to be very careful so that we do not slip in repayment. Liberals, and liberals, that's why people are worried you. about the sovereignty. Liberals, let me stay with you. We know how they operate businesses here. Liberals. And also, so that's, that's the fear. Liberals, sorry, really. excuse me. It's not me. about having powers to sue Liberals, you. One would have me. expected, quickly, one would have expected that they would tie the project specific to say, if we do not pay back, then go after the asset, take it for 10 years and manage and recover your money. That's not the case. The case here is a blanket waiver. So they can come after any assets that they deem fit. Okay. And that's the fear of certain uh, uh, persons in, in some quarters. Uh, and which, from the beginning, ought to have been tidied up. Awesome. Awesome. You just covered what I was going to ask you. I was going to say that uh, it's been said that this has been the international practice and you felt a thorough job wasn't done and you've provided alternative. So, Honorable Davis, probably we are running out of time. Let me get your final thought on how we can rework this contract. It can still be resigned, and let's look away from the politics around it. What do you, how do you allay the fears of Nigerians? Both of you have been able to do that in terms of we are not ceding our sovereignty to come and govern us, but when it comes to assets, both of you have explained some other issues around it. So how do we take care of this clause? Well, then, Presently, I, 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 the truth is that I am, I am not too sure that this loan, this one, the one we're in, in, in conversation, I'm not calling it contention, um, we can be reworked. But I, I would think, like I've said before, and which um, liberals are so agreeing with me, is that the National Assembly should give international community confidence in the process that the international community should always believe that before we go into some of these agreements, that the I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed properly. Because this, this, what we are doing now does not present us in good light before the national, international community. Whoever wants to give us loan, whether Chinese or no Chinese, they will be careful. And for the Chinese, like I said, I do know the Chinese very well too. The Chinese are not, uh, I, I don't think they are, they are just keeping track for you to fall in so that they grab their, um, their resources. No, it, it, it's a company, like every other company, like any other bank, Zenith Bank, any bank, there are banks, look at the power um, contracts. What happens? They are covered by Nigerian banks. I don't want to go into it. Anybody that gives you loan will have some way of guarantee to make sure that if he default, his loan doesn't go, um, uh, go um, it's not, it doesn't become a bad debt any longer. And especially this is um, a foreign loan. We are aware of our history of debt uh, forgiveness and debt, debt cancellation. And not everybody wants such, such things to be done. That's why they are giving us loan at 2.5 percent, and that's why they are giving us moratorium of 10 years, and after that, a, a period of uh, payment in 20 years. I think that if the National Assembly, whenever these requests come, we should sit down as National Assembly members to look at the, uh, the issues involved properly, where there are gray areas, they sorted them out before they went ahead. That's what the minister is saying. That because of our attitude now, who is going to give us that 5. Point something billion to do the uh, the Lagos Calabar um, rail line? It's going to be difficult. The negotiation is going to be difficult. They'll be, they'll be dragging our feet. And it's going to affect our developmental processes very negatively. And who is going to give us that time at like this time to develop? Not very many people. At such generous times, I'm not sure we're, we're going to have it. So it's always essential. Like I said, 
Maybe the executive, it's not this very present because the loans that are in contention were not even signed by this executive. But of course, government is a continuum. Whenever you take over government, you take over all the, the, the assets and okay. liabilities, you take over. And I think that is what needs to be done. That, and finally, I want to correct one impression. The executive does not say that the resolution of the National Assembly is just they advice. No. They no, said no, 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 so. I They said so. I they have Assembly, I, said again. I will repeat it. I will re I repeat our position as we know in National Assembly, if one house of the uh, National Assembly, I've got two houses, although if it's only one house, it's advisory. But when the, the, the resolution is co-signed, is co-adopted by both chambers of National Assembly, it has a force of law. So I, I want to end. So whichever secretary says so, or what the National Assembly says is just adversary. That is not the, if a house of the National Assembly says like so, the House of Red now. Incidentally, I've also not heard the president executive say so. It used to it's something we used to hear in the past. But recently I've not heard enough. Now you agree with me. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. said, no, I know that it, it was said in the past. And it was always usually once said when one chamber of national assembly says so. No executive, no body, no minister, the president okay. never. When I was and, in the house, uh, we called the Zuma the case. Uh, uh, Honorable. In terms of in foreign Thank affairs. You. And the president, they all asked him, was in such it was in Ethiopia representing the country, said, if you don't come immediately and they issue a warrant of arrest, you'll be arrested. He came back immediately. Okay. Because that's the resolution of both chambers of national assembly. Honorable Sokol. No, 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 our no, time no, is fast, can, man. Thank you for your thank you for your position. And uh, Mr. Liberal Zoshoma, I know you are itching to have <laughs> something to yes. say, but please, our, our time is fast, but I don't know. Yeah, quickly, quickly, quickly. You have 10 you, seconds. You asked, you asked for the way out. You, you have so given please it. Please permit me to quickly recommend the way out. Go ahead. Okay. So for me, the loan had been taken. So this is not the time to begin to redebate and rework the loan. What we should be focused on is repayment. Yes. You have between now and 30 years after the completion of the project to pay. And so we should work out a, a, a watertight repayment plan so that we do not default okay. because of the clause inherent in that agreement. And also to win public trust and confidence in the process. Thank Simple. you so much. Thank you for, for keeping to time. That. Thank you, Liberal Zoshuma. Thank you for both of you agreeing on this issue. And probably to put it on record that we made an attempt to speak to the House of Reps, but probably because of the drilling process that took quite a long time, we're not able to have them in this conversation. But our door is still open to have their take on this issue. And we also tried to speak to the Minister of Transportation himself to be part of this conversation. He's yet to also respond. So we'll keep the conversation going so that we can all be on the same table and we'll forge ahead. I'm still going to keep uh, Liberals and Shuba for the second conversation. So my thank you is still suspended for now. And thank you, Honorable Sir Conte Davis, for your time. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, are we going to have another election in Bayelsa State? The question will be answered in the next segment. Please don't go anywhere. The journey started off at the Ebute Meta train station in Lagos, where the construction firm CCECC has its workstation site. We are on the way to Ibano to inspect the construction work being done in the area. With the Minister of Transportation, Votimi Amechi, on board, the aim of the inspection was to assess the level of work done on the Lagos Ibadan Railway Terminal. He was joined by other officials, including the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who, along with the Nigerian Railway Corporation boss, expressed thoughts on the work done so far. So when I got into the train this morning, especially this one, it's as clean, as modern, as any coach anywhere in the world. And I was also quite impressed with the passion of the Honorable Minister. You can see that at every point in time, he is pushing the contractors. Say, look, I can't wait till October. I'll come back in four weeks' time because we want to be able to deliver to Nigerians this kind of infrastructure. Uh, today we are on the uh, immediate train ride on the Badan Lagos train service with the diesel multiple unit that just arrived. We have the Minister of uh, 
information and the Minister of Transportation on board to check and to at least bring up the level of uh, work after COVID or so that uh, we can encourage the contractor to come back to site. In view of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Transportation Minister stated how the ministry was adhering to the COVID-19 guidelines while the work continued. For those of you who have been following us, you know that for every station, we had 150 to 200 workers. For now, you have 10, 20 workers. What we agree with them is to increase the number of workers and manage COVID very well. And what did we agree with them? They should come with their face mask, face shield, and come to work. Because like, we also agree with them, it appears, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, that COVID has come to stay. So let's hope that by January this, this thing will be ready. The Transportation Minister also gave information about the Ibadan Kano project and loan. So when we talked to the National Assembly to solve this their investigation of loan, not, they're not investigating corruption in construction, it's the issue of loan. What we meant is that they should please allow us get the loan for uh, Ibadan to Kano which is about $5.3 billion. Because if you're telling the man who lent you money that you don't like the way he lent you money, he won't lend you any further. That's the point. But for this one, we have $1.6 billion, for which we're contributing about between two and $300 million. But don't forget, they have not finished paying. They could stop at any time. On our journey to the Lagos Ibadan Terminal, we visited the uncompleted stations in Apapa, Kajola, Papalanto, and more. The work has gone quite far, but there is still more work to be done in helping Nigeria achieve the infrastructure of her dreams. Reporting for Plus TV Africa, Adebanke.